Hey, what's up? John Sanmez from simpleprogrammer.com. And so today I thought we would answer a little question that I know some of you, especially if you're new to software development, have been asking, which is basically, hey John, what is the difference between centralized source control and distributed source control? Yes, that's right. We're going to be answering a technical question today, uh, although it's not a highly technical thing, but, uh, but definitely a lot of developers, even experienced developers, get confused between what is centralized source control and DVCS. Is that the right acronym? DVCS, Distributed Version Control Systems, DVCS, right? So distributed source control versus centralized. So some centralized source control systems are like CVS, that you know was one of my favorites. Uh, Subversion, which I liked even better, and then uh, and then on the distributed side, we've got stuff like Git, which is probably the most popular of all time, super popular source control system, and we have Mercurial, and and, and there's there's a bunch of different ones, of course, right. So what is the difference? What is the, the primary difference? I find that a lot of developers are confused by this because they seem to think that decentralized source control or distributed source control it means that you know everybody has their own repository and their own version of the code and that means that there is no central version of the code and 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 there's no master and everything is equal and there's there's no such thing as a master repository or any kind of centralized it's all decentralized man don't you get it? <laughs> uh, but that's not really possible and it's not really true. So I'm going to delve in here real quick into what it actually is a difference. So let's start with normal source control. We'll call it normal, right? Centralized source control, which basically most of the older source control systems, CVS subversion, use this model, which was basically you have a server and a client, just like most applications, and the server is the master repository. It contains all of the versions of the code, right? So as you make revisions and changes to the source code, it is it lives there. If you have a subversion server, CVS, whatever, that's centralized source control. So as a developer, as you are making changes, you first of all have to get the files from the server. You tell the server, I want this particular code line. I want this particular file and this version of it, right? And you have a client on your system that is going to communicate with the server and and do that for you. So for example, you might say, I want to grab the latest from trunk and it, the client is going to communicate with the centralized source control server and it's going to say, okay, I want these versions, you know, the head revision of every single one of these files that's in this code line that belongs to this repository and it'll pull them all down and it'll take a while and you'll get them all locally, right? And then let's say that you want to switch branches, right? Then this is where, where you're going to see the difference. So in the centralized system, if you want to switch branches, then you're going to have to go and get all the files again from the new branch because the source control system, you're going to be grabbing it from the server. Now, when you're working in centralized source control, what do you do? Well, you you get the current version. You First of all, your workflow looks like you probably update, right? You do an update and that gets you all the changes that have happened that the server says changes have happened to the files that you currently have local copies of. Right, and then you're going to do your work. You make your changes, and then you're going to commit those changes or check them in, whatever you want to call it. And that's going to transmit those files or the changes from those files. Sometimes just the differences will get submitted, but for each file, up to the server, and it's committed. Right, so everything is central in this model. You have one repository. It has all of the source code, all of the versions of it. It, it has all the version history, everything that's that's attached to the project and the different branches and code lines and all of that is there. And you as a developer are just working with a client that gets you local copies that you modify and then commit back in. Now, let's talk about distributed. So what happens in a distributed system? Let's say you're using Git or something like that. 
Okay, the, the major difference here, the, the, most of the same mechanics, most of the same models still applies. The only real major difference is that instead of there being one central repository where you have, uh, which is a server and you have clients, every single developer, every single person who is going to use the source control system, use Git, is going to have, they're gonna have Git installed and they have their own server. Right, So they're going to have a copy of the entire repository, not just the code, not just a local version of the code, but all of the revision history, all of the branches, all of the things that go with that repository. So why would you do this? Well, it, it makes it so that there's less network transfers, right? And it is, it is distributed, right? You can, you can work locally and you can work disconnected, at least a lot easier, right? So this, you're gonna still use the same workflow, basic workflow. There's just two small changes, which I'll get to in a second here. So your basic workflow will be now you're still going to need to get versions of the file that you're going to work with, right? So you're going to get those from the repository, except the repository lives on your machine. So there's network, no network transfer. You want to switch branches? Easy. It instantly happens because there's no network transfer, right? So you get the local version that you want or the copies of those files from your repository. You make the changes, boom. You commit the changes and you commit them to your local repository. Now, at this point, you have a local repository that has your changes, what's called a change set, right? And it's still disconnected from, there, there's gotta be some kind of master, right? Some place where the system of record, right? And this is where I think people get confused with distributed source control, is yes, technically, all the repositories are quote equal, but if you wanna actually ship working software, <laughs> and I think we probably do, and you wanna actually coordinate a team of developers, you have to say no, this is the master one, so this lives on a server, this repository lives on a server, and, and we're gonna, we're all gonna communicate with this one. So, how do you communicate with the master? Now, you take your local repository and you either push or pull, right? So, if you you want to take code from the master or from some other repository, it doesn't even have to be the master, you pull change sets into your local repository. Now, when you're ready to you know, let your code go out into the world, you push change sets. So in a normal development environment, you might be pulling some change sets from the master and, you know, and then doing your changes and then committing them locally and then pushing them out back to the master but you could also push and pull to other developers repositories if you wanted to share code. So there's a lot more flexibility and a lot more options in distributed version control. Now, of course, there is a trade-off, right? Because there is a somewhat more complexity, right? If you're just using centralized source control, something like CVS or Subversion is, is fairly easy to learn, I think. I do feel there's a little bit of a of a bigger learning curve in something like Git, but it's more powerful. Like I said, I think that there's really very few disadvantages aside from perhaps the complexity and the, and the storage maybe requirements are higher for having a copy of, of the repository locally with distributed source control. But, but I think that, you know, that can easily be, be overcome. So, so that's, that's the basic differences, right? Again, it's, I want to emphasize the point that it is not, uh, that it's everything's distributed, man, and there's no central record. It, it's just the model. Instead of having a client server, everyone has the server, essentially, and copies of the repository, and they can work, check in, and do all the kind of functionality of version control locally, and then they can merge that back up. So you can really think of it as every developer having their own server, their own repository that, that you know, and, and it can evolve separately, it's true, but, uh, but that's generally how it's used. Now, you know, again, if you wanted to ask me which is better, which should you use, uh, honestly, like I, you know, I think that it's worth investing the time to learn something like Git or Mercurial and do distributed source control because, like I said, there's really no disadvantage to it. Uh, you know, I mean, you can make some arguments, and and I have in the past, but but today that's more widely used, and it does give you more flexibility. So. I'd, I'd recommend it. You know, the only argument that I could really possibly make for for using 
a centralized source control, which could be easily overcome with process, is that centralized source control gets you integrating with the with other developers' code more often, for the most part, like for continuous integration. The same thing can happen with Git. It's just that you you're one more step removed. So it's it, sometimes what happens in distributed source control systems I have found is that developers may work too long without pushing their code or doing a poll, they may work in isolation for too long, which is not a good thing. So you've got to actually put process in place to prevent that. But yeah, that's the differences. Uh, if you have some comments, if you think I've missed something or totally uh, botched this, uh, go ahead and leave them below. But I, I try to simplify this as much as possible to get to the basics. Obviously, there's a lot to know about source control. And, and whatnot. So anyway, hopefully you liked this video. Uh, if you have any questions that you'd like me to answer, you can email me at john at simpleprogram.com. And I have one big request for you. As always, if you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and click the button now. And, uh, and I promise you, you will get more videos from me because that's how subscribe works. What, what do you think about that? All right. I'll talk to you next time. Take care.